الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله All praise is due to Allah and success is for those who are pious and the enmity of Allah ultimately is on those who oppress and I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger of Allah before beginning let me ask the brothers to move forward a little bit so those people who come in a bit late they can just fit in the back without having to disturb others <clears throat> this evening's topic is the 99 names of Allah or as it is also known Asma'ullah Al-Husna or the beautiful names of Allah where does this idea come from? it comes from a verse in the Quran wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala identifies and informs humankind that he has the most beautiful names in Surah Al-A'raf which is the seventh chapter verse 180 Allah says there وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا وَذَرُوا الَّذِينَ يُلْحِدُونَ فِي أَسْمَائِهِ سَيُجْزَوْنَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ the most beautiful names belong to Allah so call on him with them but shun those who deviate regarding his names for they will be punished for what they do وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى the most beautiful names belong to Allah there are a number of other verses in the Quran which also speak about Allah's beautiful names and as is customary in understanding the Quran we go to the Sunnah the Quran gives us the basic ideas and the Sunnah provides us with details further clarifications we understand the Quran through the Sunnah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ saying to Prophet Muhammad sallam, we have revealed for you the reminder, the Quran in order that you may clarify for the people what was revealed for them the Quran was sent down, revealed through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it was the Prophet may God's peace and blessing be upon him who would clarify the meanings in order to remove any doubts from our minds as to the clarifications which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would give Allah said in the Quran وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى He does not speak, Prophet Muhammad does not speak from his desires whatever he relates is based on revelation which he has received so the Quran is understood by the explanations given by the Prophet Muhammad this is the proper way for us to understand the Quran and this is the foundation of Islam for other religions Christianity for example they have a scripture the Bible 
However, they have no explanations that are revealed. As such, each and every individual can make his own interpretation and explanation. As a result, there are thousands and thousands of religions or sects or cults, all of them claiming to be the true Christianity. But because there is no revealed explanation of the text that they have, and the text that they have are of questionable authenticity anyway, they are left in a state of confusion and misguidance because they have no revelation to guide them to the truth. Because the Quran was the last message of God to mankind, then Allah preserved the meanings of that text. Not only did He preserve the text, the Quran, but He preserved the meanings of that text by preserving the explanations given by the Prophet. May God's peace and blessing be upon him. The earlier books of Revelation had with them prophets. When the books were revealed, the prophets explained what these books meant. But because those scriptures were for limited places, particular periods of time, individuals, specific communities, not meant for all mankind for all time, then neither was the text preserved nor was the explanations saved. This is why the earlier revelations are either lost totally or only fragments remain and the explanations are not there to give them clarity. But in the case of the Quran, when Allah said, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ husna," The most beautiful names belong to Allah. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is reported by Abu Huraira in Sahih al-Bukhari to have said لِلَّهِ تِسْعَةٌ وَتِسْعُونَ أَسْمًا مِئَةٌ إِلَّا وَاحِدَةٌ لَا يَحْفَظُهَا أَحَدٌ إِلَّا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَهُوَ وِتْرٌ يُحِبُّ الْوِتْرَةِ Allah has 99 names 100 except 1 or 1 less than 100 anyone who guards them will enter paradise and he Allah is a unity and he loves the odd numbers So, Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, informed us that Allah has 99 names. Allah said, the most beautiful names belong to him. He has beautiful names, which are his. Prophet Muhammad specified, not only are they beautiful names, but there are 99 beautiful names. How do we understand this? That Allah has only 99 names? Well, that could be understood from this hadith. Some understood it this way. Allah said He had 99 names or 100 less one. Can you be any more specific than that? No. However, when we look at other statements of Prophet Muhammad we have to conclude that in fact Allah's names are not limited to 99. Why? In one dua which is narrated by Ibn Mas'ud and collected in Musnad Ahmed which is authentic Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said directing a prayer to Allah as'aluka bi kulli ismin huwa lak 
I ask you by every name which belongs to you. Sammayta bihi nafsak, which you called yourself. Aw anzaltahu fi kitabik, or you revealed in one of your scriptures. Aw allamtahu ahadan min khalqik, or you taught one of your creation. The Prophet. Aw istaatharta bihi fi ilm al ghaybi indak, or you kept to yourself in the unseen knowledge which is with you. So, this implies that there are names, other names of Allah, which Allah has kept for Himself and not revealed to us. So, the names are not specifically 99. As a matter of fact, a Maliki scholar, Abu Bakr, Al-Arabi, he mentioned in a book called Al-Ahwazi Fi Sharh Al-Tirmidhi that some of the scholars of his time had gathered from the Quran and Sunnah over 1,000 names of Allah. Imam Nawawi, who wrote that book called The Forty Hadiths, I'm sure most of you are familiar with it, Forty Hadiths of Nawawi, he said that there was a consensus among the scholars that the intent of the number 99 was not to limit Allah's names to 99, but informing that whoever guarded them will enter paradise. Meaning that Allah has an unlimited number of names. If 99 of them are guarded, the one who guards them is guaranteed paradise. Some scholars pointed out that perhaps the 99 represents, yes, truly 99 that are known to us. That the additional numbers are variations which may be called synonyms. You have names which may be three, four different names, but they have one meaning. For example, Al-Ghafoor, Al-Ghafar, Al-Ghafir. These are all names which Allah describes Himself by. But all of them have basically one meaning, the oft forgiving. So where the numbers go beyond 99, it is possibly due to these synonyms. But that if we were to limit in terms of the actual meanings, the ones, the single meanings, that that number would be 99. Scholars also pointed out that the number 99 was specified to indicate that the names of Allah were not deduced. They are not for us to deduce them using our own intelligence, our own minds. That the names are revealed names. Meaning that we have to go to the Quran and the Sunnah to find them. Where they are found in the Quran and Sunnah, these we say are the names of Allah. We don't draw out of our own minds names which we conclude based on certain characteristics which Allah describes Himself by. 